One of y'all fall into the hole. What's going to happen? Because I'm sure as hell not going to save you. What's up? Number 15, Dope. A Frozen Maiden. One of the strangest and scariest discoveries found frozen in ice holds an innocent title, The Maiden. What is that? You may be thinking, well, that's not so scary, but think again. This Incan mummy is the thing nightmares are made of. The well-preserved mummy was found alongside two young child mummies, 22,000 feet above sea level, on the slopes of a volcano. Although it was 1999, nearly 500 years after she died, the maiden still had lice in her hair. All three were preserved in the icy mountain, completely ready to rise from the dead. Johan Reinhard, an American archaeologist and member of the expedition wow. that discovered the three mummies, said, The doctors have been shaking their heads and saying they sure don't look 500 years old, but as if they died a few weeks ago, and a chill went down my spine the first time I saw her hands because they look like those of a person who is alive. The history of this poor maiden Maiden is devastating enough to make you sympathetic to her plight. Even if she's a bit of a Frankenstein monster, she was likely suffering from tuberculosis or a similar bacterial infection. Tuberculosis? People what? decided it was best to sacrifice her to the Yoya Yeco volcano in Argentina. Yo -ya, what? How do archaeologists know this? They swabbed the ancient patient's lips and compared it to living pathogens. One of the archaeologists, Corthels, said of the method, Our technique opens a new door to solving some of history's biggest mysteries. It will also enhance our understanding of our future greatest threats, such as the emergence of new infectious agents or re-emergence of known infectious diseases. Amongst the bodies was a grand collection of silver and gold, textiles, statues, pots with food in them, and a feathered headdress, suggesting that the trio were sacrificed, not to appease the gods, but to enter the realm of the gods and live in paradise alongside them, despite being killed before their time. The three sacrificed mummies are now presumably enjoying an afterlife that's markedly better than the disease-infested life they experienced on Earth. Here's hoping anyway. Number 14, Everest Markers. Imagine climbing up the highest mountain in the world and being visually reminded every so often that you might die doing it. Reminded by the dead bodies that came before you and did, in fact, fail at reaching the summit, or at least making it out alive. This is the re You, A, on the real? Keep it 100? Oh my god, that's creepy. Keep it real with you. If I was climbing, what do you say, Mount Everest or like the top is mountain or whatever? And I've seen that. I just seen a body just. That is so creepy to look at. But if, if I seen like a skeleton or something like that, and I and 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 I I I finally got to the top and I seen that this, I would have been like, <sighs> okay, Whew. finally, Whew. finally made it to the top, who. Took me a day and a half to get up here. Woo! I'm so tired. I'm tired, boss. Can I eat? Yes, thank you. I... Woo! Thank you. No. I'm going back down. Yeah, no. Sorry. I'm. Yeah, I'm. Mm -mm. Nope, I understand that we just got here, but I'm going right back down, bitch. Mm -mm. What would y'all do? What would you do if you seen something like that? Hmm? Seen a dead body, seen a skeleton, just, just posted up like. I don't have any. I don't have any pants on. I just have. I just have underwear. But what would you do? You just seen a skeleton or like a dead body talking about something. So, not not talking, but like just just post it like. Hmm. 
What would you do? <laughs> oh my gosh. Deal. Each year, everyone from the most seasoned of mountaineers to those who are taking their first go at the mountain pays thousands of dollars to climb Everest only to be reminded constantly of their imminent death. Oh my god. Oh my god. The attempt. 240 climbers have perished, and many of their bodies color the mountain, their bright winter gear frozen in the ice. The most vividly scary and deadly section is called Rainbow Valley for this very reason. The colorful gear from the dozens of dead bodies of previous climbers. These markers on Everest remind climbers that although the climb doesn't seem terrible, the altitude and potential for storm can be fatal as it has turned for whole groups in past year. That graph, that chart, that that picture right here. That's though that's a lot. That's a lot, man. Like there's a difference between saying like 200 240 people 240 people died right but there's a difference between saying the number and then actually seeing that in person oh my gosh Ooh. Ooh. Mm -mm. The lack of oxygen and exhaustion that high up can take your life. This place is called the death zone for a reason. Why aren't the bodies removed from the mountains? Because getting up and down the mountain carrying only yourself is strenuous enough. Climbing up and down Everest while carrying another human being will likely leave you yet another victim. And so the dead remain. Number 13. But can't you just... I mean... Just, just throwing it out there. Can't you just get a helicopter and, and just get the people? Pretty sure you can. If you can't, tell me why you can't in the comment section. Can't, but can't you just get a helicopter, get a rope or a ladder, and get close enough and get the body, go down, dump the, like, get, the, get these mother cluckers, get these dead mother cluckers off of this place. And, and at the bottom of the mountain, have signs, have literal signs saying that, yo, more than 200 people have died. Have that all over the place at the bottom of the, of the mountain so people know this, right? So they know, so, so they, so... Like, like, like they, like they wouldn't have to climb up the mountain to know that people have died. They know because of the signs, because of the pictures. All, I mean, I feel like you can take a helicopter and just get the people. I, I just saying. Frozen mammoth. The friendly oh. Russian woolly mammoth calf. Luba is a real charmer, so perhaps you won't find this 41,800 year old mammoth particularly scary. 41,000? In real life. The discovery of Luba in May 2007 was completely accidental. The woolly mammoth was found not by scientists, but by a reindeer hunter and breeder named Yuri Kudi, along with his sons. They were out on the Arctic Yamal Peninsula in Russia when they came across the enormous mammoth carcass near Yuri Bay River. Kudi knew it was a significant discovery, so he traveled 150 miles to seek advice from a friend who, in turn, told him to contact the local museum director. Kudi then tracked the authorities back to the Yuri Bay River, only to find the carcass had vanished. It turns out that Kudi's cousin decided to profit off the find by selling it to a store owner who lived in Nuvi Port, a settlement close by. In return, the cousin received two snowmobiles, quite a terrible exchange for the priceless mammoth remains. What's worse is that dogs had chewed parts of Luba's body in the uh, moving process, dang, damaging it. But dang. once examined, the calf was found to have been preserved incredibly well, with its trunk, eyes, organs, skin, and even some of its fur intact. Milk from the calf's mother was even found in Luba's stomach. Mm. The discovery, quite simply, was incredible. The police and Kudi returned the remains to the Shimanovsky Museum by helicopter, where it was named Luba in honor of Kudi's wife. Don't know about you, but I wouldn't want anything with the words woolly or mammoth in its title named after me or my loved one. But hey, to each its own. 
Number 12, Frozen Century Old Photographs, A Fatal Expedition, Deaths and Sinking Ships, Fear and Adrenaline, Some in the Ross Sea Party didn't survive the Arctic Expedition, but the 100-year-old photographs of the crew did. Conservationists were renovating Arctic exploration huts in 2013 when they discovered a box of negatives cemented in an ice block. Once developed, the century-old film depicted photos of an ill-fated crew, the Ross Sea Party, which had set out to cross Antarctica from 1915 to 1917, led by famous explorer Ernest Shackleton. The crew was split in two, with one set of explorers, the Ross Sea Party creating a supply route on the continent's Aussie side, while the other half entered on the opposite side, from South Georgia, this team led by Shackleton. Theoretically, they would meet in the middle. Theoretically. Shackleton's ship, Endurance, did not endure. It slowed with the ice pack before it even made it to Antarctica. Staying in the same place for around nine months, the pressure began growing around the ship, so much that they had to abandon it. They began to cross the frozen ice sheet on foot, watching their ship sink after only three more days afloat. The Shackleton crew set up Patience Camp in January of 1916 and sat patiently through a blizzard, a blizzard that kept them there so long that all of the crew's 69 dogs were killed in order that the men didn't starve to death. Damn. They abandoned their efforts in April, managing to wait out the weather before plopping into three lifeboats that took the crew to Elephant Island and then back to South Georgia, where Shackleton called off the expedition. The Ross Sea Party faced the same challenges on the other side, but they did manage to complete their mission, creating the supply routes for Shackleton's crew, not without a few fatalities and another sinking ship. The photographs came from their party and, sadly, the ill-fated crew is memorialized in blocks of ice where some of their men's lives also remain. Number 11, A Frozen Volcano. You've seen the ground freeze. Oh! You've likely skated upon it. You may even have gone ice fishing, planting yourself on a frozen lake over a hole, Tell but you probably don't realize that when this ground freezes and thaws, the land beneath it changes shape, like some creepy shapeshifter. The land that regularly freezes and thaws can create some whopping land formations. Can I say something, please? You don't pause, not whatsoever. You don't give me time to talk. I literally have to pause to say something. Please. I was going to say, that looks awesome. That, I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, that's all I want to say. That looks awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, he literally, I mean, he literally, he doesn't give me no time to talk. Like, <laughs> I don't want to talk over you because I don't want to sound disrespectful. You know, break up your, your, your sentences. Like, give some pauses in there, man. Don't just, you're talking like like a run on sentence you know no no commas no periods no uh semicolon no nothing man. you just you just talk <laughs> non-stop break it up a little bit man let me let me say something <laughs> the pingus found on china's tibetan plateau the fairly flat and barren land is sometimes oddly interrupted by these 160-foot tall volcano-like hills. These pingus form when the frozen ice underground is pressurized. Gradually, ice layers are fed by the pressurized water from below, producing these pingus that just may explode like gushing ice volcanoes. While they may not be as scary or dangerous as lava spewers, if in the wrong place at the wrong time, Pingus can certainly shoot your eye out. Oh Number my god. 10, a frozen plant. Never mind. Well, no Venus flytraps or other crazy scary plants have been discovered in the permafrost, Russian scientists have uncovered plants that date back 30,000 years in the frozen tundra of Siberia. In 2012, the thin-leaved ancestor of the Campion were found in a ground squirrel's winter storage. Little did he know, he would be in for a long winter. As the Ice Age overcame him and the entire Earth, the scientists regenerated the fertile plants from in vitro fruit tissue culture, Pleistocene, that dated back to the late Pleistocene age. The fruits were so intact because they had been fossilized beneath the permafrost sediments, which had never thawed, serving as a cold freezer with temperature levels of minus 7 degrees Celsius. This discovery, and all of these discoveries found in the permafrost, will serve as a sort of frozen petri dish to study the rates of microevolution and discover various prehistoric plant tissue. Number 9, a frozen crater. 
If you thought craters were only for the moon, you thought wrong. Below the permafrost of Siberia, yet again, lies an enormous crater of the Yamal Peninsula, aka the end of the world. If you saw the size of this crater, you might start to think it was the end of the world too. Oil and gas workers first spotted the giant crater when flying over the area. Russian scientists were sent to uncover the finding, and they discovered a bottomless pit of scary under the ice. The crater is around 200 feet wide and who knows how deep. Since it's finding, many different theories have been banded about as to how and why this giant crater came into existence. Some believe it was an explosion, others think it was the work of a meteorite, and still others blame missiles that have gone astray. But Russian scientists have found an extremely high level of methane in the area, up to 9.6% to be exact. Yo, my question is, how long has that been a hole? Like, how long was that just open for? Because I feel like we could have easily covered it up, you know, filled in the hole, pause on that, right? I felt like we could have done something, but we didn't because I felt like we just straight bullshitting. So, all I'm saying is we could have easily covered that, covered that up, you know, just saying. Because, you know, what, 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 what if, you know, you tipsy? What if you drunk, right? And... You fall over. You know? What if, you know, you with your friends or you with your, you know, your your friend or whatever. Or you with, uh, you know, your boo thing. Right? And, you know, y'all tipsy. Y'all drunk or whatever. Or, you know, you're not even drunk. You know, you sober. Right? And y'all playing around or whatever. And one of y'all fall into the shit. One of y'all fall into the hole. What's going to happen? Because I'm sure as hell not going to save you. Right? I'm literally, if you fall into that shit, I'm literally going to say, oh, shit, and I'm bouncing. Just saying. I mean, that I'm, that's a big ass hole, Paul. All I'm saying is, how long has that been a hole, and why didn't why haven't we covered it up yet? I feel like we can, but somebody bullshit. You want some tums? You know your your stomach act your stomach acting up. I got you on them tums. Just comment tums, and I got you. I'm gonna mail them to you. That's a big ass hole. Normal concentrations in the air usually only contain 0.000179% methane, according to Andrei Plekhanov, an archaeologist at Sele Hart Scientific Center of Arctic Studies. The rising temperatures may have melted some of the permafrost, releasing the severely high amount of methane, which resulted in the massive crater, or perhaps it's just a pit of despair. Number 8. A Frozen Headless Corpse not only does the Siberian tundra serve as an indeterminate source of long extinct animals, prehistoric plants, and giant craters, it was also once a storage unit for bodies ravaged by vicious viruses like smallpox. The eradicated disease could find its way back into the mainstream as the permafrost starts to thaw and these once buried bodies are freed. This is what happened 20 years ago when a body was found in the Kolyma River and then transported to the Northeast Research Station in Chersky, Siberia. Whether or not this headless corpse was smallpox ridden, no one would know, and so everyone steered clear of it. The frozen soil could have kept the virus alive and thriving. Many people are frightened at the thought of a smallpox resurgence, particularly local residents, when bodies are recovered or mass graves are exposed in Siberia, and the scientists were frightened too, so frightened that they didn't even care to conduct any research on these aged human remains. The corpse was reburied, despite the fact that one of the researchers estimated the corpse's traditional reindeer skin garb was roughly 300 years old, long before smallpox became such an epidemic. The fear of the potential virus destroyed the possibility of discovering this headless corpse's history. Sad, but perfectly understandable. Number 7. Frozen Puppies 
Oh. If the sad emoticon was invented for a reason, this is it. There's nothing sadder than frozen puppies. In fact, this entry is not so scary, unless you imagine these frozen corpses returning as zombie puppies. Now that would be freaking creepy. Again, found in the Siberian permafrost, a 10,000 year old family of puppies was discovered. Buried in what researchers presume was a landslide, mm. the puppy corpses were uncovered in incredible condition and are hypothesized to have been one of the first domesticated breeds, a dog that is now found in North America, having crossed the Arctic land bridge alongside human nomads. Although the puppies are ancient, you probably still imagine them with this cute little puppy face, but remember, they could also mobilize into zombie puppies that will eat your brain, so run for your life. What? Number 6, Alien Eggs. Imagine you're walking what? across a frozen lake when, all of a sudden, you spot this strange amassing of concentric circles on the face of the ice. What would you think of the strange formation? Is it natural or a- This mother clucker just touched something that's literally out of this world. Bare hands, too, like... You couldn't touch it, you couldn't, like, you couldn't touch it with, with your shoes, you know? You got a hoodie on, you got a jacket or, or whatever. You couldn't, you couldn't do something like this, huh? You couldn't, you couldn't do something like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You couldn't do, you couldn't, because you, you like this, you clearly have a jacket or, or a hoodie on. You couldn't do something like this? And touch it like this? You couldn't touch it like that? Yeah, you, you just had to use your bare hands, huh? Okay. Get the hell on with that shit. Ian, two friends faced the same questions when they were met with a curious mass on a lake in Utah. The mass was spherically engraved into the frozen ice and tiny holes permeated out from its center. Their conclusion was that the unidentifiable mass could be some sort of extraterrestrial leftovers from their visits on our planet perhaps alien eggs. The two filmed the mass and even touched it with their bare hands, describing its texture as slimy. They did not collect any samples, leaving scientific explanations all up to theory. But of the 10,000 plus YouTubers who viewed the video, you'll find plenty of oddball theories, a coffee splash, salt cubes that have been laid out to form a fishing hole, and those with no imagination at all claim it's just natural frozen ice, with some areas freezing softer than others. What do you think this strange spherical entity could be? Number 5, a frozen rhino. Everyone's heard of woolly mammoths, but have you heard of woolly rhinos? No. The scary cute little baby rhino, Sasha, was discovered in, you guessed it, Siberia as its ice casket melted for the big reveal. Like Luba, this particular woolly rhino was found by hunters in 2014. They were heading down a stream when mm. they spotted what they thought Damn. was a dead reindeer carcass floating just beyond the permafrost. Upon closer examination, however, they discovered the age-old rhino and removed it from the soil, storing it away during the cold season before delivering it to the Saha Republic Academy of Sciences. Being just an 18th-month-old baby calf, Sasha may not have been all that scary, but she is scary unique. She's the only woolly rhino calf to have ever been found, and one of only a handful of woolly rhinos to be discovered. She wasn't fully intact, however, having had her backside torn apart by a predator. Oh my the gosh! Leg, the torso, the head, and her horns and woolly skin have been preserved. Researchers who examine these extinct creatures' carcasses will be able to better hypothesize how they grew, lived, and adapted as the Earth drove them to extinction. Number 4. A Frozen Skeleton Pit Near the Himalayas lies a glacial lake called Rupkund. It's innocent enough in the coldest months when it's frozen, but when the ice thaws, a stunningly creepy pile of bones is revealed. Human bones. The eerie remains were uncovered in 1942 by a forest guard who came across Skeleton Lake as it's been rightly named and the hundreds of bones that flow within it. The bones were originally thought to be World War II remains of Japanese soldiers. Nope. They were later thought to be the remains of Kashmir General Singh and his men, who were believed to have gotten lost in the upper Himalayas when returning from 1841's Battle of Tibet. Still, nope. They were much, much older than a century or two. Wow. National Geographic scientists detected that the skeletons dated back to 850 AD, and that many of the skulls indicate they were struck by tiny pinpricks falling straight down upon them. 
probably hail. In fact, as the local folklore tells it, Kanaja's king, just Tawol, and his men were celebrating in the high mountain when Latu, a deity, massacred the lot of them for disturbing his sleep. Talk about raiding on the Kanaja's parade. Now all that remains, frozen in ice, is a pit of death to remind us all to respect the heavens. Number three, a frozen warning of warming. American geologist Paul T. Walker may have known exactly what was to come when he wrote a note, slipped it in a bottle, and buried it beneath some rocks near the edge of a Canadian glacier on... Wow, you... <laughs> you just talk, 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 talk. That's like no pauses in it. <laughs> hey, that, but that just got me thinking. Has I, And I still haven't never done this, and I still, but I, I want to. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it one day before I die, hopefully. Um, has anybody ever put like a note or something in a glass bottle or in a bottle, sealed it up, and just like threw it out in the ocean? Because I would love to do that one day in ho in hopes that somebody else finds it, you know? Because I live in North Amer North America. You never know. Somebody in I don't know. Europe may come across it. I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I don't mean to say that to, like, condone or promote, like, 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 littering. Or, like, harm to the environment. But, like, I've always wanted to, to you know, do that. Because I've seen that in TV shows and movies. Stuff like that. And, um, I just want to know if it works. You know? But yeah, if anybody has ever done something like this, let me know that in the comment section below. But if you and if you would like to try that, let me know. Also, let me know that in the comment section below. What I don't know what I would will write. You know, I probably will be like, you know, if, if somebody else finds it, the bottle on the other side of the world. You know. I'll probably write the date, the time, the year, um, my YouTube channel, right, and then like a list of my social medias, my Snapchat, Instagram, or Twitter, right, it'd be like, if you find this message, take a, take a photo of the bottle, and a picture, I mean, and a note, and then direct message me or hit me up on snapchat be like yo i found this what's up hey that'd be dope right that'd be so dope if like if i did that and like some years later like five years later whatever ten years later uh somebody in like europe or like asia china whatever like finds finds it like that's crazy like that'll be that that's low key kinda awesome. You know? I may I may do that. I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Next time next time I'm like in a in a near a beach or something, I'll do that. I don't know, but the chances of like if I if I if I was on the beach and like I I put a note in a bottle and I just do it, what are the chances of it actually coming back to the same like you know, the shore, like the same, coming back to me. Would I have to be deep in the ocean, like far out in the ocean for, for it to work? And then didn't I just drop it off? Or, because I'm going on a cruise next year, I'm going to Florida, then uh, Mexico, right? Or Mexico, for some people. I may do that, throw it off the cruise, the boat, ship, whatever. And I may do it like that. But I kind of want to do it this year. I don't know. All I'm saying is I want to do that one day. And it would be dope if somebody found it like 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 10 years later or something like that. Five years. I don't, I don't know. It would just be dope. Hunt Island in 1959, not knowing whether his message would be discovered, 
His note instructed the finder to measure the distance from the bottle to the edge of the glacier. In 2013, two Laval University scientists from one of the island's research stations did, in fact, uncover the bottle frozen in ice more than 50 years after his death, which was only a month following the written message Damn. when he died of paralysis from a brain seizure. They followed his instructions. The scary and shocking measurements revealed that the ice shelf had retracted 233 feet from Walker measurement in 1959 which was 168 feet to the newfound measurement at 401 feet this vast difference indicates that global warming is real and that is scary no matter which way you look at it number two a frozen virus what? Unless you're a climate change denier, you'd probably agree it's common knowledge that the Earth is getting warmer and the ice caps are melting. If you also agree that this warming is man-made, then we'd better unmake it, because we're opening up a whole new can of worms when it comes to unearthing prehistoric viruses in the Earth's frozen ice. Recently, a hundred feet beneath the frozen soil of the Siberian tundra, a giant scary virus was discovered still active, still infectious, still going strong. Despite being an estimated 30,000 plus years old, according to the researchers who discovered the virus, it was fat and elongated, which is why it was named the pathos virus, pathos being derived from the Greek word for a large storage barrel. The virus is said to be the largest on Earth, but don't wet your scaredly pants quite yet. Although enormous and infectious, the human species is immune to the danger the virus poses, as it only affects amoebes, single-celled organisms. Thank God most of us are many Celled, but the discovery still poses a problem. When the permafrost is distributed, either by scientists, nature, or man made global warming, supersized viruses that lurk below may also be disturbed. And next time, who knows if the virus will be harmless to man, like this mega Siberian one. The permafrost may serve as a waiting room for prehistoric infectious viruses that have the potential to destroy the human species. Oh, Before we get my to God. one, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT. I also have a Twitter at YTChills where I post video updates. Ooh. I'd really sorry. appreciate it if you followed me. I'm sorry. Feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. Number one, a frozen and curse yet another mummy known as Utsi the Iceman was found in the Utsul Alps in 1991 the ice what, what you what you what you doing what you doing brother man <laughs> hey I don't know if anybody seen Justin Bieber's like uh video of like when TMZ caught him and he was like, Justin Bieber was like talking to like paparazzi and he was like, brother man, brother man, brother man, brother man, brother man. <laughs> but yeah, man, like, like, what, what, come on, what you doing, man? Like, like, what you really doing? Are you playing games right now with your life or? Are you playing games with your life? The hell, man? What you doing? I mean, cause, I mean, if you if you need a controller, then I got you, right? Because it sounds like you, it sounds like and seems like you playing games. What's your life? So, I mean, here's a controller. If you know, you can you can play all the games you want. Don't tag me again. Don't pass me the controller. Right, granted, I have it, but you know that's besides the point. You know, I'm gonna give you the controller, so you can go ahead and play these games, cause that's what you're doing right now. Gee, why did I say it like that? And dates back to sometime around 3,300 BC, wow. making him hella old and hella scary. As the crew removed him from the mountain after two. That is so funny to hear. I don't think I have ever, as long as I've reacted to top 15, top 15s, right? Or chills, whatever, because I think those are the two, two of the same people. They sound, if they're not, they sound really, just like, they sound really similar. They sound like the same people. But, as long as I've heard, I mean, as long as, as long as I've reacted 
to uh, Top 15's videos? I don't think, as far as I can tell, I mean, as far as I can remember, I don't think I have ever heard him say hella. Like that word, hella. That's kind of weird for him to say because I, I'm not used to him saying that. You know? That's like me saying, uh... <coughs> what was that? What? What the hell? I know that was. Have you ever... No. You know? Have you ever coughed and hiccuped at the same time? I remember the first time I ever did that. I lied to you now that I was in the car. I was, going, I was on my way to church. I was really young, but I still remember that because it felt like I was about to die. Has anybody, have you ever coughed and hiccuped at the same time? You know why that's, you know why that's dangerous? Because when you cough, you're coughing out. Right? <coughs> like you're getting it out. When you hiccup, you're, it's like, you're sucking it in, pause. But like air is coming in. At least for most people. Or well, at least for me. When I cough, air is coming out. When I hiccup, air is coming in. So I, so it's like when I cough and hiccup, it's like I don't know what the hell to do. So it's like I, fuck it, I'm going to die. You know, it's like, <coughs> I, you know. But I just got really off the topic. Really off the topic. I, I, tend to, I tend to do that. But, that's, you know, him, top 15s, saying... Hella, <laughs> which is really funny to me. That's like me saying, how are you doing? When, in, in reality, I say, how you doing? You know? I've came across, I've, I've came across a lot of different People that speak a lot of different ways and languages. And so, I mean, I know, I know how to finesse my speaking. And I, and I know how to adjust my, my, my language and, and, and how I talk and enunciate. Depending on who I'm talking to. But naturally, that's how I talk. You know? How you doing? I'm not, I'm not about to put on a show. I'm not about to say, how are you doing? You, are you doing okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. I will see you later. No. See you later. I, I mean. You know. So, it's, 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 it's funny for me to hear him say hella. Because I'm not used to him saying hella. <laughs> oh, man. That's like me saying, uh. That's like me saying, what are you doing? I don't usually say that. I say, what you doing? Or, if I'm like, it depends on the context and who I'm talking to. Or, of the context of the, of the, of the situation, like what's going on. Like, someday, sometimes I will say, what are you doing? But normally I'm saying, what you doing? So, I mean, all I'm saying is that was kind of funny for me to hear, hear him say, hello. German tourists discovered him. Utsi was a cursed thing. In the 13 years that followed, seven people who were involved in the excavation ended up dead. Wow. Four of the deaths were extremely violent. While the other three were natural, the Iceman himself is said to have experienced a violent death. He was speared by an arrow, after which his skull was bashed in with a rock or some other blunt object. Damn. Cursed conspirists suppose that the Iceman wanted to avenge his death in the form of cursing those who would remove his body from its final resting place. And maybe that's true. Let's tally his victims up and decide for ourselves. Death number one was Rainer Hen, the forensic pathologist who placed the remains of Utsi in a body bag. He died in a terrible car crash on the way to a world conference to discuss Utsi in 1992. Dang. Death number two was Kurt Fritz, 
the mountaineer guide who led Hen to the remains. On a separate climb, he was killed in an avalanche. He was the only member of his party to die. Death number three was natural. The photographer of the excavation died from a brain tumor. Death number four was El Mutt Simon, the man who discovered Utsi. He'd gone missing in 2004, and after a week, he was found in a creek where he'd landed after plummeting 300 feet off a cliff. Death number five was a man on Simon's rescue team who passed away only an hour after his funeral. Mm. Death number six was Conrad Spindler, a lead expert on the Iceman, who passed away from a chronic condition of ALS. And the last death was Tom Loy, a scientist who examined the Iceman's clothing and weapons. He passed away naturally as well from a hereditary blood disease. After that, the curse seemed to have run its course. That is, until the Iceman cometh. Oh my god. <coughs> <coughs> Mm mm. I don't think they should. I don't think that they should have been messing with that. Uh, with that skeleton like that. Mm mm. You know. You ever like? You ever see somebody or witness something or witness like somebody else doing something and it's like, you know, you don't know too much about what they're doing, but you feel like they shouldn't be doing that. That's how I feel about this that number one. Why why can't you just leave it as is? Like why you always gotta be touching stuff? Americans are so nosy. People are so nosy. I'm not gonna say yeah. I'm just gonna say people, not Americans. Just people in general. So nosy. Um, but I feel like a lot of this would have been avoided if, if, if people didn't touch certain shit. If it's not yours, don't touch it. That's it. That's it. Now, granted, I'm the, you know, I'm the opposite of that because you know, if it's if it's dealing with if it's dealing anything with food, if you leave it around and your name is not on it, and you don't tell me that that's, that this is yours, like this cake is yours, you don't tell me this cake is yours. Oh, best believe I'm eating that when I go on break. You know. You know, it's it's like I mean, some of my coworkers get mad at me because I have a tendency of eating other people's food. But it's like, you know, you can't be really mad at me because you didn't put your name on it. I didn't know that was yours. It was in the middle of the table, so I thought it it was free game. You know, I thought that half I thought that half eaten sub was free game. I didn't know that it was yours. I didn't. Sorry. Not sorry. It was hella good though. You know? Had my mouth all watering. I was like, oh, oh, oh man. It was so good. Mm -hmm. mm, how much was it? $20? Yeah. I'm not paying you back. You can't that. Yeah. Um. But. That's just me. You know? I like food so much that I, would, I just eat whatever I see. Pause <laughs> on that. Yeah, man. But I feel like some of these videos, some of these situations could have been avoided if we, if if they didn't, if they didn't touch it or give it no acknowledgement or or no notice. Like I feel like the people in in story one. Could have could have lived could have lived a little bit longer, a lot longer, if they didn't touch that uh that um that skeleton, that cursed skeleton. That's crazy. But I'm telling you though about that. That uh, number 14 
with that with that Mount Everest type thing. I think it was Mount Everest, whatever. You know, have pic have real pictures of dead bodies that's at the top. Have real pictures of that at the base, at the bottom of the mountain, right? And have like stories or whatever saying that yo this is real you can eat you can easily die up here if you not like you know if you not if you if you if you yeah you know this could be you if you want to play games this can be you if you don't want to listen and read and hear about the red flag. That's all I'm saying. So. <sighs> hey, you live and you learn. I mean, that's pretty much it. But I'm dead serious. I, I, I really want to do that note in a bottle. Twist it up, seal it up. Throw it out in the ocean. Hopefully somebody find it. Right, a couple years later, be like, hey, yo, I found it. Nice to meet you. <laughs> keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy. My family.